through the decades, thousands of children, each with their own personal tales of heartache, each struggling to conquer a disability, have found sanctuary at the Open Air School in Durban. Here, on these playgrounds, one gets a glimpse of the kind of South Africa global peace icon Nelson Mandela would often speak of, untainted by their racial or social differences. Children united by their various challenges. Driven by the simple desire to learn. And just be themselves. With over 100 staff both inside and outside the classroom, these vulnerable children are always in safe hands. Open Air was the very first school in South Africa to cater exclusively for children with physical disabilities. It was under this hundred-year-old fig tree back in 1921 that the first group of children with respiratory illnesses gathered to learn. And so the Open Air School was born the only of its kind on the African continent. But through the years, as wars raged and political changes swept through the globe, and indeed South Africa, open air developed into the school you see today. And these days, its doors are open to children with every kind of disability, from the physical to autism, and even those with terminal illnesses are welcomed. Keeping Open Air School running doesn't come cheap. More than half of its annual budget from the Education Department goes towards paying its utility bills. Now, add to that a predominantly impoverished learner population. And, well, making ends meet becomes virtually impossible. Imagine 300 children. You want to be making a difference in each and every one of their lives. That's what school's all about. But of those 300, our finances can only cater for maybe 95%. What about the 5%? What about the ones that leave our school? And perhaps had we the money, we could have given them the laptop that they need, the tablet that they need, the Dragon program that allows the child with a speech impediment or a speech challenge to communicate. Little things that we take for granted. We are in the red more often than not in terms of finances. We are a non-profit organization. But despite its strained financial situation, no child at open air ever has to learn on an empty stomach. Thanks to the school's feeding scheme, this school meal will probably be the only meal these impoverished children get to eat every day. And when it comes to miracles, there's no shortage at the open air school. Meet Smangela Mfeka. She was born with a spinal cord defect called transverse myelitis, which meant she would never be able to walk. In 2006, Smangela joined Open Air School. She was eight years old. It changed her life. When I came to the school, I couldn't walk, Ms. And now I can, I'm in crutches. I don't know. I used to walk and crawl my stomach, but now I can walk just because of opening school. Whatever their background, every single child is full of the sense of belonging. And for young minds and hearts, it's sometimes all they really need. At my old school, there were children that weren't like me, so I felt weird, like I was the only one that had this disability, but now at this school, there's not just me, there's other children that I relate to and stuff. There's something special about this school, and um, for people like me, it's easier, and all the teachers here are very uh, nice. Have no doubt, educating a disabled child is a costly affair. For Principal Noel Mudley, 
it's a constant quest to find additional donors. I would say for a school like this, one would need per year four to five million rand. Tablets are costly to give these children that are autistic tablets. Braille education, one brailler costs about 8,000 rand. The braille embosser that puts together um, the package for these learners is about 70,000 rand. Braille paper is the most expensive paper you can buy. So braille education on its own, I'd say you need about 1.5 million to give these blind learners, we have about 30 of them, the best possible support in terms of curriculum delivery. What about your autistic children? What about the learner that's got cerebral palsy, that needs a laptop, that needs software that allows him to speak? What open air lacks in money and effective special needs learning tools, its pupils make up for with sheer determination. Boasting a 100% matric pass rate over the past decade, these classrooms have also produced highly acclaimed sports stars, singers, poets, entrepreneurs and even the country's very first white Zulu court interpreter. Not bad going when there's also immense physical disabilities to overcome. About a kilometer away from the school is the open-air hostel, also located in Durban's Glenwood suburb. For children, some of whom are abandoned by their families, and others who simply cannot afford to travel to school every day, this is home. Here, there is always a warm smile and snack to greet every child when they arrive from school. Hello. 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 Can I have some bread? No, no, thanks. Are you shy? Don't be shy. <laughs> Come here. Don't be no. shy. Okay. Come sit beside me. Thank you. Don't think that. Don't be shy. <laughs> Mary Ernest is the senior house mother. For 19 years, she and her dedicated team have loved and nurtured the children that have come and gone. Sometimes playing the confidant to troubled minds, a friend to the homesick child, but always a mother to all. <laughs> and like any other mum, it's the simple things that makes Mary's job so rewarding. We had a, a function at school where all the matrix came to us, to the house mothers, and they said they're inviting us to school to a concert or something. And we didn't know what it was about. And when we got down to school, what a concert it was. It brought tears. I cried. I just stood on the stage and I cried when they called us up and they gave us a little gift and they said the reason uh, why they're calling up us up was because they said they really appreciate everything we've done for them. Despite the hand these children have been dealt, they just keep on defying the odds. And if you thought being disabled was an excuse for the children to get away with doing chores around the hostel, think again. There was a crisis where our dishwasher was broken. And it was so amazing to see children on crutches and children on wheelchairs coming to the sink and washing their own dishes. But like many other special needs schools around the country, a stark contrast to the smiles and laughter of these beautiful children is the brutal reality that plagues this unseen society. I need some help. More often than not, each special school is like a voice in the wilderness. And there have been many echoes in the past that make promises 
that say that this will be done and that will be done. But the reality is when you get to grassroots, you don't see these things uh, materializing. We want to be valued, recognized, appreciated, and we want to make a difference. So out there, I'd like to say to the world, respect the fact that people with disabilities can offer so much. But the only way it can be done is through opportunity that you can give them. So give us that opportunity. Nothing, certainly not their physical disabilities, or in some cases, the reality of never living beyond their teenage years, can quell the indomitable human spirit of these remarkable children. And for as long as open air school exists, learners with physical disabilities will always have a haven to fulfill their dreams. Vanessa Tedder, Open Air TV. As a tree grows in the springtime beneath the southern sun.